episode of The Marketing Podcast is brought to you by Neighborhood Domains. Every business needs a domain name, including yours. Visit NeighborhoodDomains.com and use offer code MARKETING to get 10% off hosting and domain registration. On this episode, we are talking about retail stores. Microsoft is testing some new checkout software. There are new Google features that help bricks and mortar stores. Walmart is doing some fun experiments. And Etsy has announced new subscription packages. Creativity Sells. Applying the right creative at the right time is the recipe for great marketing. The Marketing Podcast looks at marketing news and finds the secret ingredients that make great marketing. Hi, welcome to The Marketing Podcast. I'm Brendan Quigley. And I'm Heather Watson. How are you doing today, Brendan? Very good. Very good? Very good. Going shopping anytime soon? If I can help it, no. When's the last time you went shopping? What is the last thing I bought? Uh, it probably was a grocery shop. Okay. Yeah, I think like that's normal. With the family. Yeah. Even that, if I could never step foot in a grocery store again, I would be thrilled. Well, today is your show. We are talking about some cool retail developments. They're just going to send me everything I need whenever I need it? Quite possibly. Isn't that what Amazon? No. Well, that's Amazon. The problem is I live in a place that Canada Post doesn't want to drive up the driveway. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> it's so frustrating. It's like... Why? Wait, I have a story not even related to this. Awesome. I, I okay. ordered some books that were shipped to me and my mailman showed up because they came by Canada Post and we have uh, my mailman has to drive up my driveway. Um, yeah. And he came up my driveway and he handed me a package. Great, thanks. He's like, oh, by the way, I wasn't sure if you were home or not. So I just put your actual mail in your mailbox, even though my package was also actual mail. It just wouldn't fit in the mailbox, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, no problem. I'll get it. I've got to take some postage. I've got some stuff I want to mail I need to put down there. And he's like, well, I can take that for you. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I still have to put a stamp and write the stuff on. He's like, well, I can wait. What? <laughs> so my Canada Postman came, Waited for you. stood in my, in my foyer, front entrance, because I figure if all the people who are safe, it'd be the Canada Post guy. He's touching everybody's checks and bills and it's everything. True, so I was yeah. like, come on in, stand here. You're like home security. And he stood there while I hand addressed a couple of envelopes and put stamps on them. And they won't go up my lane. That is frustrating. Yeah. I don't understand. So, okay. So my father's from Ireland. In Ireland, like everyone knows their mailman and the mailman comes to everybody's door and they put it through like the slot in the door. Right. Like there's none of this mailbox stuff down at the end of the lane. Now, yeah. maybe there is now, but like that's, that's, that's the way they run. I feel like I'm starting to get to know my mailman. Next time I'm just going to invite him in for tea. Well, Christmas time in Ireland, you leave like a little bottle or you leave a little gift for your mailman. I think that happened when I was a kid too. People would leave gifts for their post yeah. office. Their, that would be carrier. perfect. I'd be we don't call them mailmen anymore, by the way. They're carriers, carriers. letter Sorry. carriers. Yep. Yep. Boy, that took a big deviation, but I was super excited about that. Let's talk about what Microsoft is doing to take aim at Amazon to stop all those orders coming from my door to my door. Microsoft, mm. you're, you're digging in on this one. This one's getting cool, isn't it? So Microsoft is currently testing uh, software that will eliminate the checkout so they are working on technology that would eliminate checkout lines and cashiers from stores. And this is coming from Reuters. Microsoft has begun showing their system, which tracks what consumers put in their carts to retailers around the world. According to multiple sources, they're also reportedly having talks with Walmart, who we'll talk about in a moment as well, about using this technology. So they're currently trying many different forms of checkout-free systems two of which involve cameras either mounted on store shelves or mounted on shopping carts themselves. So the checkout free system can see what items place in their cart. Such a system would mean that traditional retailers would have the technology to compete against Amazon Go stores, which allow customers to shop for items and then simply carry them out of the store without needing to go through a checkout line. And then, you know, it's automatically just built to your account. Pretty groovy, huh? It is. I think that I've said this lots of times to my friendly clerk at the grocery store, how many times I have to handle a product from the point I take it off the shelf to putting it on the conveyor belt, to putting it back into my cart, to putting it into my car, to carrying it into the house, to carrying it to wherever it belongs in my house. And if I could just scan an item as it's going into my cart and then I take my cart, walk out to the store, would be glorious. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. can't see you nodding emphatically. I am nodding. I am nodding. I, 
I wonder about Amazon Go and this new initiative from Microsoft because are we not just headed towards shipping everything? There are certain things that people still want to pick up. I, I mean, I couldn't imagine not being able to squeeze my pineapples. Yeah. My mangoes and avocados. I, I think I th- I think that there will be a place for farmers markets and like central markets for those fresh f- vegetables, fruit, meat, that kind of stuff. But I really do think that even that stuff eventually will be shipped. There's big stuff too. And I also read, and I did include it in our lineup, Home Depot wants to be kind of the new online, the Amazon for building supplies. Oh, interesting. Uh, and I think about the Ikea problem. Like they, their yep. Ikea has great stores, but it's ridiculous to try and ship anything because of just the weight. Like there's a big, I ordered a, a desk, I think from there's Ikea. There's way more Home Depots though. There are way more yeah. Home Depots and it's a lot easier for me to go pick up from Home Depot or have them ship to me and save on because it's not shipping halfway around the world. It's just yeah, shipping exactly. across yeah. town. And, right? I, like, I, and when it comes to big stuff like that, the, the construction trades really do have it down. A lot of that stuff gets shipped when you're doing renovations and when you're doing a new Direct build. to the job site. Yeah, direct to the yeah. job site. But for the stuff. homeowner, right, who yeah. wants to save a few bucks, order online. And while we're talking about it, auto parts blow my mind how quickly those things ship. Mm -hmm. Like if you're at the mechanic, like they'll send a car. Yeah, always. That's amazing. Always, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, So this is just, I think, uh, here's where I'm getting at with this one. Because we also think, okay, well, yeah, Microsoft and Walmart have the technology and the financial backing to mm -hmm. be able to do this stuff. How does that work for the small retailer? And I think what it really comes down to is eliminating the friction, which we've talked about before, between um, thinking about purchasing and getting it in your home, right? The, where where that item belongs. So mm-hmm. if you have a retail store, no, you're not going to be doing the whole, uh, you know, putting in the technology where it's scanning the cart and having to go through it. And maybe they're just buying one item and not 50 like I do at the grocery store. But how do you make it easier from the moment they walk in the store to the moment they walk out, but beyond them walking out, them actually getting home with your item? And what can you do to lessen that? And and it could be contactless purchase, right? Like where somebody's tapping their 100%. card to pay for yep. something. Like that's a simple low entry barrier. If you're not already doing it, there's no reason why you shouldn't or couldn't be doing that. I'm pretty that. sure Square has an affordable contactless reader. Yeah. It's a Bluetooth. Yeah. The other thing I like in retail, like which is similar to this, is... Uh, at clothing stores do this really well. If I'm walking around and I've got an arm load of garments that I want to try on, just kind of draped over my arm, um, a sales associate will often come up to me and say, oh, hey, can I start a fitting room for you, right? And take them from me. Well, what if you have a small retail shop and you see somebody who has two or three items in their hand? Can you say, hey, can I take those up to the cash for you, right? Because now it's not going to prevent me from picking up more things because I might drop the thing that I just picked up that I'm not sure if I want. And so what are you doing to make those experiences more um, or less of a burden to your customers when they're in a the store? And this is one way that Microsoft is, yeah. is approaching doing I, it with Walmart. I love the idea of order online, pick up in store. I think that's uh, helpful, you know, especially busy times of year, Christmas, Black Friday, those types of things. Um, but then I also think just from a payment point of view, it's far better to come in and be like, hi, I'm here to get my whatever order number show ID, however you're going to do that, and then walk out with the thing already purchased. Um, And I think that's a relatively easy thing for small businesses to do Um, that doesn't include shipping, but Mm -hmm. still get someone into your store. They're still there. They're looking around. Just to pick something up. Just to pick something up. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And you're really good at your job and you've got great merchandising going on in your store. And while they're picking up their thing, they see that fantastic other thing and they already like you because they're already in your store and have already bought from you. So, Yeah. Yeah. Something to consider. Something to consider for sure. The Google is doing some stuff to help uh, retailers, brick and mortar stores, which is kind of cool because oftentimes brick and mortar stores feel like they're being forgotten about particularly small ones. So they've added a feature to its online ad platform aimed at retailers to um, drive foot traffic into their stores. So they have a quote, see what's in store feature that uh, lets stores show off a list of their inventory for free in a knowledge panel, which appears on the right-hand column of the search results for a business and on Google Maps. Uh, So this is coming out of the the Google blog, um, as well as TechCrunch has reported on it a little bit. So Google is also offering location information for video campaigns on YouTube, local catalog display ads that will let businesses show larger hero images and full listings of other in-store inventory, including price, um, 
and they've partnered with point of sale and inventory data providers um, for receding and what have you to work directly with merchants to provide that data to Google. So when people are buying things, that's kind of combining in with your analytics. Uh, and they've also introduced a competitive pricing feature that lets retailers check pricing for similar items sold by other merchants, which would also let consumers do that too. Um, but businesses can then raise their bids for ad placements to see if um, they can offer customers a better deal on that. So where this gets really interesting is this is the same database that Google uses to populate their knowledge graph, which means you are feeding Google knowledge about your business, which is a good thing because then they make that knowledge available across all of their platforms and services like Google Assistant. So when someone says, you know, find me an XYZ and then your product, because it's in this system, can come up via voice. So I think this is the, you know, what, what to do to prepare for augmented reality, VR, and voice technology in the future. This is one of those things that I think is a really good idea for businesses to take advantage of. Yeah, and, and it's like low entry, like low barrier to entry exactly. on this. It's like pretty simple for businesses to get involved. And let's not forget, I mean, we often talk about this whole online sales world where, you know, the, the Facebook sales channel, the Instagram sales channel, and all those kind of uh, messenger that you're able to um, sell directly through these. Retail brick and mortar sales um, are still responsible for 90% of all retail spending. So although it seems to be amplified that everybody's buying online, 90% of all retail is coming through brick and mortar stores. So leveraging the tools that are available to drive more people into your stores just makes sense. Do this. Go do it. Go do it. Yeah. Do it now. I don't know if it's available right away. Uh, but is it coming up? It's, it's, I don't know, the date on this was yeah. not long ago. Um, they just announced it mid-June. Um, so I think it was, it was July launch is what I remember okay. reading on the Google blog. So the next piece, I mentioned we were going to be talking about Walmart. Are we talking about Walmart yet? Is that where we are? We yeah. are. Walmart... Okay, so this is, but I, I want to preface this because oftentimes, you know, a decade or more ago when Walmart started coming into, t into communities, they were saying, oh, they're going to close, they're going to kill small business, right? And Walmart is still very much so a retail giant in terms of what they're doing. They are definitely, we talked about it on another episode, they've got like a test store. Remember it was uh, like, yeah. I can't remember, it had like a the creepy, creepy name creepy or something. Test store. Area yeah, it was like 51. Area 51 yeah. kind of thing, right? Um, so they're Probably playing with, is area 51. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're playing with all kinds of cool technology. And this, um, this article that we have has seven ways that Walmart is innovating with technology. Uh, and this is coming out of retail dive. So the takeaway on this, before I start listing off some of these seven is, um, what can your business do to jump onto some of these like little steps now, because they're so big, they can't turn around a ship so quickly. But if you as a smaller business, as a smaller retailer can, um, can even implement a, a fraction of that, it's going to put you ahead of the curve so that when they do roll it out, you'll be like, yeah, I'm already doing that. And I'm still serving our great customers. So the first one that they're doing, um, is changes to their mobile um, a mobile experience. So um, they had an initiative that they launched a while ago where people could order and pay using their mobile device, but it wasn't very useful and kind of intrusive. So now they've rejigged it. They've got new features um, that have store maps that people can find products, which for a giant like, like Walmart is easy because every store has like the planogram and everything's always in the same spot. So if they change one store, they're changing all of the stores. Um, and, and that's rolling out to a whole bunch of their locations. But they've also um, show, made updates to give people ability to uh, make appointments if their store has any kind of appointment service, um, or picking up certain products in the department, making an appointment with um, sales clerks, for, um, what was I seeing here? Oh, wait, I'm thinking something else. Sorry. Um, just being able to use their mobile experience to, to be able to control their in-store experience better for consumers. Um, the other piece is lists. I am this person. 
Uh, roughly 80% of shoppers make paper lists before heading into the store. I still love a paper list. As much as I am like in everything else, the antithesis of paper, I will grab a scrap piece of paper and scribble down five or 10 things that I don't want to forget as opposed to putting it in my mobile phone because I don't want to walk around with my phone in my hand. I want to have my hands free while I'm shopping. So they have um, a new list feature in the Walmart app um, and they can... Uh, the way that it generates is using like natural language. Um, so it's not like, you know, my Cuisinart, yada, yada, yada. It's just coffee maker, right? Or, um, you know, coffee. I know in my mind what kind of coffee I need to get. I just need to remember to pick up coffee. So they're trying to make that a little bit easier for people too, uh, as well as integrating it into the store ma map so that when they're in an aisle, um, you know, they'll group those things together. They're making returns easier. Um, so they're, again, this is through their app. So customers who have bought something online and in store, they can um, scan a paper receipt to, for non-digital transactions, and then they can initiate a return within the app uh, and then selecting the item from the history and creating a barcode. Then they can go into the store, into a designated area for people who have like the returns that are using the app. And then they just scan the code, give the thing, and it's been all done and returned, which is kind of a cool feature. They're using robots. No, small ro retailers aren't going to be able to do this at all. Well, maybe we can build a robot. <laughs> well, I mean, I think they're maybe using the robots that vacuum stores. That would be... Like a Roomba? A Roomba robot, yeah. Um, restocking shelves, finding and returning misplaced products, Tracking inventory are some of the most time-consuming tasks at, at any retail store. So now Walmart is going to start using robots to do that. A roving robot that scans general merchandise once a day, um, visits the food and consumables twice a day, pairing artificial intelligence with machine learning. It's improving inventory accuracy, and they're rolling it out in about 50 different stores. Reducing employee turnover. Turnover. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because because there's they less won't employees. Have any employees. Yeah. yeah. Um, Favorite line so far. Yeah. They're doing some stuff with associates. So the people who are remaining that are not robots. Yes, hopefully. Or they're just training robots to pretend to be associates. Um, so they will be doing a new dress code. They're launching a program to pay for college. Um, they're rolling out a new technology tool to assist associates in the store, a.k.a. robots. <laughs> we fired your friend, but you still have a job. Um, no, the they're, it works with the robot. They're using mobile devices that are pairing with the robot to transmit a to-do list to employees based on what the robot finds. Taking orders from a robot. <laughs> the robot is now the manager. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the robot takes photos, points out issues, and precisely identifies the location. Uh, um, this is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, so maybe you can't really rule all these out in your store, nor would you want to. There's a new scheduling app that gives employees remote access to their schedule, which I think a lot of small businesses have um, or can tap into um, in some different ways through paid or free services. They, but, you know, employees can swap and shift shift swap shifts um and uh and that's kind of handy those exist already like for non-walmart yep. people just those funny little apps yep um and vr training uh making a video game to make training experiences fun and that kind of stuff instead of watching the corporate video because everybody loves the corporate video this is how you lift a box without hurting your back bent at and 90 it was, degrees it was made to in the floor yeah, yeah yeah the big glasses um, automation. They are doing more automation for inventory. Um, I'm trying to feel the, what this is. They're putting, um, what is this? It's the fast unloader. It can move a full trailer of merchandise along a conveyor belt, there sort the items and get them to carts for shelf replenishment in a fraction of the time it took by hand. So basically the truck will back up, load it off, sort it give it to the robots, which will stack the shelf. And, and then, then the robot pictures. will make you a list when things just aren't right. Quite right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's genius. 
It's genius. However, I have to say, I was in a small retail store a week or two ago on a Saturday, Friday, I guess it was, and they had just got shipments of new inventory in, and it was fun in the energy of the store because there were two or three workers, employees there, and they were like unpacking stuff like it was Christmas. Right. Right? Like just yep. giant bo- or boxes filled with all kinds of, oh, look at this. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, where are we going to put this? And there was stuff everywhere. And it felt a little inconvenient and cramped as a customer in the store, but it also felt really energetic yeah, and cool. Right, and right, I was right. like, what else is in that box y'all out there? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, maybe I want some of that. You Can know? I help you unwrap things? Yeah. <laughs> it felt fun to yeah. be part of that process. So do more of that instead of using robots. Um, and a concierge shopping service. And this was the one piece that I thought was kind of cool. So again, buying online, but then inviting people to come in to pick that stuff up. Uh, and what can you do? We, and we talked about the concierge where they're doing it. Like, you know, somebody comes to your home. I don't know if I ever want a a Walmart employee. I'm sorry, Walmart employees, but I don't know if I want any employee coming to my home to drop off the items I just bought. This concierge service is what they're talking about. But in your in your store, you know, how can you add those extra little bits and pieces like gift wrapping, for example, or, you know, pairing together a a card, uh, little bits and pieces that just add value to your customers. I'd like to go back up to the returns real quick, because I can think I think this is something that even small businesses can do. And it can just be a form on your website. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're using any kind of um, if you're using any kind of. uh, POS system, any type of history tracking for the sales that are made, it's not hard to take a name and a sale and then have them bring it in, like like to set that up in a more automated way. So I think that's something that small uh, and medium-sized businesses can do without the fancy barcode creating scanner drop-off spot. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's a small touch. You know, the more that people can do on your website, I think the happier they'll be, not that they don't want to call you and talk to you, but I mean, it, it sometimes takes more effort to call and talk and do all that than it does just to fill out a form, to get a confirmation email to say you're good to bring it back. Of course, do the inspection when they bring it back kind of deal mm-hmm. and then refund the money. Do the refund. And, and and it might seem like, well, why bother? They can just bring their receipt in. You know, half half the people are going to come straight to the store for the return. Half the people are going to go look for the return policy. So if you make it clear and make it easy, um, then I, I think it's something that you that can benefit. It's like a feature that that can benefit. I think there's also something that feels special when you walk into any store, and as soon as you present your name, they know you in some way. It's true. Like they're expecting you, or you know, oh hi Heather, welcome back. Yeah, you know that kind of thing. I think I talked about this when we were talking about the uh, McDonald's mobile app ordering. You know, you you built into the microwave. I'm here to pick up or microwave. Listen to me, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> belting into the microwave who does that yeah. no like I, I roll up and say i'm here to pick up order w17 and they're like oh heather yes it is yeah i i have arrived what else do you have for me <laughs> my usual please yeah it just feels good yep. so if somebody can do that in advance and say oh yeah i've got it right here let me see that sweater you yeah. know it just it feels a little bit more personalized the other thing i thought was interesting is the list section of the the app like personally, I'm like, mm, that's kind of it's kind of cheesy or that's kind of like novelty. But really what Walmart's doing is they're observing their customers and they're saying, this is what customers are always doing. How can we help them do it? And I think you should do that as a small business, too. Like if you've got a lot of people who are coming in and doing the same thing, like maybe they're always looking for a certain type of product or they're always looking in a certain way or something like that. Or they're always coming in on their break at work because your location, you know, if you're in an area that gets a high kind of nine to five traffic and they're coming in during that time, then you know, how can you accommodate them, right? Like how can you maybe put a little bit extra staff on at that, you know, three o'clock break time so that you can get people in and out quickly or do like an express kind of solution for people who are just on a break, right? And, just observing and, and how people are consuming you. And I think about that for like, like um, restaurants, like to have that lunch menu, like a, like a 10 minute sandwich or, a, or you know what I mean? Like, like a really quick turnaround at that, at that lunchtime mm-hmm. so that you can get 30 people in and out and back to the office or back to the job site on time. I, yeah. I, I always appreciate that. Yeah. Or it's that pre-order where people can, you know, exactly. pre-order online, come in and, and pick up and retail f- goods or restaurants. I feel like people too, like with the pre-order, like they're maybe preoccupied with the automation because they see what Amazon's doing. They see what uh, Microsoft's doing. They see all this, this technology, like the pre-order could literally be your name, your number, 
and a description of the thing you want to buy and you'll have it ready right like like it doesn't yeah. have to be a full e checkout with a shipping and te- it doesn't yeah. it could literally just be send us a message we'll pull out the no four things that we ahead. have exactly yeah. yeah like maybe it's a like you wanted to pre-order i'm blank and something they can just have the four options laid out for you when you show up yeah you yeah. know get get their estimated time of arrival yeah and it's those little things that build the relationship and like become super it's like the non-scalable things are always the best things yeah you know although i have to say if you get a robot that would be pretty cool i'd be up yeah yeah I'd i come. wonder if you could like train a roomba to like do something to for you. like put things away grow taller well because there's like a computer in them that right that moves around you know so if you just had like a little like arm arm on like the, the canada arm yeah that just <laughs> can we get on that someone make someone. me a tiny arm for a roomba and it can be my restocker there we go have to be light stuff do you ever go to etsy no but but we were like let's sell some jam on etsy one time jam of all right. things right and before i could even get the description of what we were doing up we sold all the jam on etsy yeah there you go so you've unreal so etsy's doing some rejigging here which is our last story that i wanted to talk about so um basically and this is coming right off the etsy blog um they've announced subscription packages for sellers so not for the buyers i'm a buyer on etsy i can't make anything so i um I like to just admire and buy things from all the people on Etsy. So this um, this subscription package is for sellers who want more customization. Uh, it's They're investing more in their marketplace with a new rev- revenue stream, basically. So Etsy Plus, which launches um, this month at a monthly rate of 10 bucks, so it's not expensive. It's a suite of new tools for sellers who are looking to scale their business. With the subscription, a seller could purchase a custom domain that points to their Etsy store. Super cool. Um, that is amazing. Yeah. Um, and also customize the featured items section of their shop or purchase discounted custom packaging specific to their brand. Um, next year, Etsy is going to be rolling out a premium subscription tier, which is aimed at more established businesses. So cases where a shop owner may have multiple employees, the subscriptions are opt in sellers who don't want to upgrade can remain on Etsy free of charge, which is now called Etsy standard and still have access to those existing services. So as a result of this though, starting in mid July, the transaction fee charged to sellers when they make a sale will increase for the first time ever from three and a half to five percent, which is a pretty big jump, but it's still comparable from other types of marketplaces. Amazon charges fifteen percent, eBay is ten percent. Amazon charges fifteen in their seller marketplace. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um and this is the cool part. They're using that incremental revenue. So Etsy is taking that extra couple of points, which will be a lot of money, um, to go towards their marketing spend, which is going to grow by 40% this year, which is more than $100 million. And it's intended to bring new people to the platform. So this is how they're maintaining their competitiveness if more and more people go to Etsy. They plan on doing this through digital advertising um, and uh, through a new NBC reality competition show for makers called What Else? Making It, of course. Um, Amy Poehler and Nick uh, Offerman are going to be the hosts, but the uh, there's a, a, a trend, an Etsy trend expert who's one of the two judges. So, I mean, I think they're well poised because from a marketing, or not from marketing, from a retail perspective, a lot of people are loving kind of the maker movement. There's a lot of makers yeah. who are doing, who are selling and doing a ton of business on Etsy. Uh, it may not even be their core sales channel, just maybe one of several sh- sales channels. They may have their own complimentary website. They may be going to markets and shows and sales. Um, and so Etsy is just kind of jumping on, I'd say jumping on, they've been on in a long time, this whole new maker movement and, and really doubling down on their marketing efforts to get more traffic t- to the website, probably to compete against now it's become so much easier for a maker to start up their own Shopify yep. website. Uh, and, 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 and I think e-commerce. you see a lot of makers do the Etsy plus Shopify. Right. And they might be trying to tie into, and I, and I know that I know some of the makers we work with try to get more sales on the Shopify side because of the high fees right. on Etsy. Shopify just charges the the monthly fee plus the 
the 2.4, which is the credit card fee. The processing, yeah. Yeah, so where, where this, the 3.5 on Etsy is the, the credit card, if I understand correctly, it's the credit card and the Etsy fee. Yeah. So this jump to five is just going to pad that a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, this is definitely like being able to add your own domain to your Etsy page is like. Doing that also stops people from setting up their own domain. Uh, yeah, right. it's true. Um, you know, Heather's widgets.com is yeah. now pointing to my Etsy store. So how do I yeah. have now, it? Pro tip, subdomains. If you're looking at doing this, you could do store.heatherswidgets.com. Ask your web developer, send me a tweet. Um, but that would be a way to set up Etsy so that you could still use your domain for a website, for a blog or for something else other ways. And, and, and yeah, that would definitely be an option. Yeah. I think this is really cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. I'm looking forward to the um, the reality TV show because, again, I'm one of those people who I, I don't have a crafty bone in my body. I, I can't knit. I can't color. I can't paint. I can't. But I love and really appreciate people's um, work and, and craft when they can. So um, I, I'm going to enjoy that kind of television programming, um, but certainly also in, enjoy Etsy even more as a, as a place to hang out. Watch out for Brendan's Jamming Jams. Is that what it was called? No. No. <laughs> it's like can bring together the band and yeah, the jam. I like this. A there hunt, we go. A hunt the hair jam. A hunt the hair jam. That is now going to happen. There we go. That is now going to happen. Are we at the end of our show? We are. We are. I want to beg and ask our dear listeners, that's you folks, to uh, to do our listener survey. We are, um, this is episode 41 now, and uh, we would love to hear your feedback on what you're liking, what you're not liking, what you want to hear more of, what you want to hear less of, what your favorite color is, all that kind of wonderful stuff. So please. And the most important question, your favorite host. Oh yeah, your favorite host. Team Heather. Um, so uh, I, we're asking you to participate in our listener survey, which you can access at acorn30.com slash podcast, acorn30.com slash podcast, and let us know your thoughts as we're kind of going to start looking more at what we mean to you guys and how we can, uh, better your listening experience. And on that note, thank you so much for listening to the marketing podcast and for the marketing podcast. I'm Heather Watson. And I'm Brendan Quigley.